New footage has emerged showing police interrogating Fotis Delos then girlfriend Michelle Trocanas days after his wife Jennifer Dulos vanished nearly two years ago. Trocanas is facing charges of conspiracy to commit murder, evidence tampering and hindering prosecution in connection with the disappearance of Jennifer, a 50-year-old mother of five who vanished in New Canaan, Connecticut on May 24, 2019. A 48-hour special airing on Saturday night looks at Trocanas' role in the case questioning whether she knows where Jennifer's body is hidden as police continue searching for a 21 month A preview for the episode features a series of clips from Trocanus Interviews video from an August 13, 2019, interrogation session shows Trocanus being presented with photos of a red truck belonging to Fody Stulo's former employee, Pavel Gumieni, which the suspect allegedly used to drive to New Canaan to kill his Did you ever hear of something called Luminol? Detective John Kimball asks Luminol is something we use to look at evidence, to see if blood was somewhere. When it hits the blood, it ele- he points to a photo in front of Trocanus, which is not seen on camera. That's blood. And who do you think that belong to? The detective asks Trocanus, to which she replies, share this article share later in the questioning. The detective presses Trocanus to stop protecting Dulos and come forward with information, telling her while pointing at the blood evidence photos, that sick Trocanus emphatically replies, I'm not protecting him. I'm not protecting him. I really don't want to see him ever again in other video clips that were previously released by 48 hours in the run-up to the broadcast show Trocanus telling police, I have no idea what happened. I have no idea where Jennifer is. When Kimball tells her they believe she's holding back information. Trocanus replies, I don't have, John, but I can walk the whole world with you if you want. I can do whatever you want but I didn't do it. CBS Privacy Policy Police believe that Jennifer's husband Fotis, with whom she was embroiled in a bitter divorce and custody battle, attacked her in the garage of her rented home in New Canaan before he allegedly discarded her body with tr- While police have yet to find Jennifer's remains, they did discover pools of blood in her garage which someone had attempted to mop up and clean. They also found traces of her blood in her car, which was later found abandoned in a parking lot. Fotis denied any involvement in Jennifer's disappearance up until he committed suicide in January 20. 20- 20 while awaiting trial on share this article share Trocanus was implicated in the case after police said surveillance video from hours after Jennifer disappeared showed her and Fotis dumping trash bags at various locations in Connecticut which were later found to contain traces of the detectives also found traces of Jennifer's blood in her car and another vehicle Fotis had borrowed from a friend the same day she Trocanus initially gave her boyfriend an alibi and said they had been together all she then flipped her story in a second interview with police and according to arrest affidavits said had given her an alibi Trocanus pleaded not guilty in February of last year and has maintained that she had nothing to do with Jennifer's disappearance her sisters Claudia and Daniela Trocanus defended her in the upcoming 48 hours episode their first major interview since the this has shattered our life because my sister is not the person that they're saying she is Claudia told host Eric she never would be capable of anything they've said that she has done asked if they believe Trocanus knows where Jennifer's body is Daniela said Absolutely not. My sister is innocent. Trocanus broke her silence on the case for the first time in a statement last year, in which she decried the cruel things people have said about her and expressed frustration at not being able to tell her side of this. Whether or not Fotis Dulos was capable of doing the things the police and prosecutors accused him of doing, I do not know, she said. But based on what I have learned in the last year, I think it was a mistake to have Trocanus. Fotis' former lawyer, Kent Mawani has also been charged with conspiracy to commit murder in connection with Jennifer's disappear. According to prosecutors, Mawini consulted with Fotis about how to kill his wife and then discard. Like Trocanus, Mawini has denied any involvement. Last December attorneys representing Trocanus alleged that Mawini had turned on their client and Fotis for Mawini was said to have sat down with police for a jailhouse interview in August, in which he described meeting with Fotis and Trocanus the night before Jennifer vanished and planning what they were going to do that Mawini was later released on bond. Trocanus attorneys told the Stanford Advocate that they are dubious about his claims and believe he is motivated only by cutting a deal with prosecutors. As Mawini and Trocanus prepare to face trial, authorities are still desperately searching for Jennifer's body, with the help of them just a day after police had said they were following up on old leads. Police were seen digging holes in the expansive grounds of 80 Mountain Spring Road though they did not disclose what prompted the search or if anything was. Authorities also enlisted the help of New Hampshire Cemetery geophysics expert, Bob Perry, also known as the Bone Finder due to his success in locating unmarked graves and burials using ground-penetrating radar. 
Perry and the team comb through a nearby wooded area where they identified four sites with disturbed soil. They feel like the body was buried out in the backyard and this is what I do. So, I said sure no problem. Perry told Fox, I check for anomalies in the ground or ground disturbance and there were four areas that I checked that had ground. I was looking for some sort of indication like a skull or some bones or something like that, that would give off something on the scan and I saw nothing there at all. He had the areas were marked with flags for authorities to later dig into, he said. Perry told NBC Connecticut the four areas ultimately showed low probability and there were no anomalies in the disturbance. He explained they detected one anomaly about 18 inches in the ground that turned out to be a pipe. In my personal experience burying someone in the backyard, especially with all the wooded area, I don't think it was there to begin with, Perry told Fox, adding that he believes it was further.